You bet. Well, let's get to the breaking news of the hour. The Associated Press reporting Russian missiles have crossed into Poland, killing two people. Let's bring in Colonel Jack Jacobs, retired general, NBC News and MSNBC military analyst. Uh, thank you for being with us. And at such short notice, still a very developing situation. We do not have confirmation uh, of these headlines that we've just uh, that we've just brought to our viewers, uh, Colonel Jacobs. But if, in fact, we are seeing, we have seen Russian missiles cross over into Poland, accidental or not, what would that mean now uh, for this conflict and whether it now spills toward, elicits a reaction from NATO? Well, it should elicit a reaction from NATO, but the, because NATO is disinclined to get decisively engaged itself in the conflict, except indirectly by sending weapons, uh, materiel, intelligence, and so on to the Ukrainians. The great likelihood is that there will be some strong protest, a denial from Russia, and then NATO will put some more economic sanctions on selected individuals and, and entities inside Russia. Uh, otherwise, it's difficult to envision how NATO would get so exercised about it that it would now want to be physically engaged in a conflict with Russia on Ukrainian soil. Uh, so it is my understanding that we are actually seeing perhaps uh, based based on some conversations I've had uh, the largest barrage of uh, Russian missile strikes on Ukraine to date. Uh, what does that signal about where we are at in this conflict more broadly right now, as we've seen Ukrainians retake Kherson just last week. Well, it, it's very interesting you should mention that because it tells a great deal about what the capabilities of the Russian military establishment, what their capabilities are. We saw the Russian, uh, the Russian forces not be able to organize themselves, use their various uh, capabilities on the ground and in the air in order to overwhelm the Ukrainians. And then ultimately, uh, after concentrating more on the east and subsequently the south and not doing very well there, ultimately withdrawing to the other side of the river. The, the, the Russian capability is not focused on ground troops, which they obviously cannot employ to uh, any, great, uh, any great success. But they do have a, an enormous capability at indirect fire. This is artillery, both short range and long range, and and missiles. Some of which are theirs, many of which they're now purchasing elsewhere because they've used up a lot of their stockpiles. But that is their default capability. That is just send lots of indirect fire, mm -hmm. fire indiscriminately. Sometimes they're precision guided at specific targets, but by and large, using it as a terror weapon in order to bring the Ukrainians and in an ancillary way, uh, NATO uh, uh, to heal. Uh, and that's what yeah. they'll continue to do because they can't do it on the ground. It, Colonel, if, if we do get the, con again, and I want to be clear with our audience, okay, there are, we know that Poland has said they're convening an emergency national security meeting we know the AP has reported, citing senior U.S. officials, that a Russian missile or missiles did land in to Poland just on the border over Ukraine and potentially killed a couple of people. Once we get confirmation of that, assuming we do, what is the proper response, if anything, by Poland? Uh, well, uh, they don't have a proper response because they're not going to go to war over Ukraine, even if they themselves have been attacked they're not going to go to war by themselves uh they would have to they would have to invoke uh in, invoke uh, section five and bring all of nato into the conflict and all of nato is probably not interested in doing that and th thus the result that probably the most likely event is that there'll be more sanctions uh not that nato is going to get involved physically in the in the battle even though even though poland itself was attacked they'll they'll attempt to get all of nato involved but there'll be a lot of resistance particularly from germany france italy and particularly the united states well the the, the the with the sanctions we're going to bring in another voice in just one second colonel one more to you which is we know the full sanctions on russian oil which is being done basically by 
effectively outlawing insurance on shipments of Russian oil cargoes at sea. No one's going to put a super tanker with $500 million of oil uninsured on, on the water. Those kick in on December 5th. We already have extension, extensive sanctions against Russia and its financial institutions, uh, imports in the United States. What other sanctions that you know of are there that could work? Because we know that right now we have not actually, it appears, done a whole lot to starve Russia of the revenue that they need. Well, there, there are two things that, that are possible, and we've been reluctant to do it, and that is, first of all, to, to take them off the SWIFT system altogether. The banking Every, system. Yeah, the whole, take them off the entire banking system. This, so we've been reluctant to do that. And, but that's one thing that we could do. The second thing, um, and we've been reluctant to do this too, is, is to punish those countries that ignore uh, the sanctions. And, and that might include some of our own allies, and we've been reluctant to do that too. But if this does uh, indicate a wider uh, a spreading of the war such that our allies become embroiled in it, and they will demand that we that we uh, that we support that, and and the, we probably would support it under those circumstances. But we've been reluctant. We've been reluctant to take them off the banking system, and as a result, the sanctions have not been nearly as effective as they otherwise would have been. Mm. Um, as the story continues to unfold and develop, as we have senior White House officials saying they cannot confirm the reports yet. Uh, the Pentagon saying that it's looking into these reports. Let's bring in Dmitry Alperovich, a Silverado Policy Accelerator founder and a former special advisor to the Defense Department. Uh, Dmitry, if I'm not mistaken, you're also an advisor to the State Department, uh, correct? What, uh, what can you tell us about, about what is unfolding right now and any knowledge you might have? Yeah, absolutely. So it appears that a couple of missiles have been uh, have landed in Poland. Uh, they appear to be Russians, although there's no confirmation of that. It, it is possible that the, these might be Ukrainian air defense missiles that mm -hmm. uh, have been launched in order to intercept the Russian missiles and may have gotten off course. So we're waiting for confirmation of that. But most likely the scenario is that this, these are Russian potentially cruise missiles that have been targeted at the border uh, towns in Ukraine that um, went off course and, and hit Poland and, and potentially killed uh, two people on the ground there. Uh, disturbing development, but uh, you know I agree with your uh, other guests that this is not going to be a cause for war, um, and uh, everyone is going to be uh, focused on how do you de-escalate the situation and how do you make sure that this doesn't happen again. So potentially we're going to be focused on providing more air defense systems to Poland. They have several Patriot batteries already um, and are getting some new short-range air defense systems as well. So potentially they'll be demanding more of those to put on the border uh, to make sure that um, any of these missiles that are uh, flying over the border would be intercepted in the future. Yeah, I, I would imagine that acquisition by Poland of those weapon systems, though, is going to take a little bit of time. So in terms of de-escalation in these key moments, these key hours uh, right now, as we do get more information, what does that look like uh, in the more immediate term? Well, first, they're going to, of course, try to ascertain uh, whose missile this was. And um, that may not be necessarily easy because, um, uh, of course, both countries are using some of the same uh, s systems. We know, for example, that the Russians are using their S-300 air defense systems as ground-to-ground -ground, uh, in ground-to-ground -ground attack mode, essentially launching those missiles to attack Ukraine. Uh, Ukraine, of course, uses S-300s as well to defend against that. Um, so it may not be possible to, to ascertain quickly um, if it's a caliber cruise missile. Um, um, that's going to be very clear because Russia is the only one that possesses those. So it's going to take a little bit of time to figure that out. Uh, but, um, you know, if it is uh, proven to be a Russian missile, I, I presume that there will be a demand from Poland uh, uh, for Russia to apologize for this act and pro potentially provide compensation. Um, and we'll see what the Russian response to that is going to be. Okay. Uh, we appreciate you both joining us and joining us on such short notice as this story continues to unfold. 
Uh, thank you. And just getting a check on the markets right now, because unbelievably, Brian, uh, the major averages are higher and the Dow has actually even just ticked slightly higher. It's basically sitting at the flat line, uh, despite the conversation that we we're having. Yeah, because again, and I want to be very clear, and I think we've made it clear, nothing, and Dimitri actually, nothing is confirmed. The U.S. government has not confirmed much. No. And if it and if it is a situation, as the conversation we just had would uh, suggest, where these are, in fact, a, a, it's an incident involving Russian missiles in a NATO ally, Poland, uh, it is very unlikely this is a situation where anybody's going to go to war and that conflict is going to escalate and involve more players. And it could even be, a Ukraine, to Dimitri's point, a Ukrainian missile. There's pictures on yes. the Internet. But again, folks, these pictures could be something else. Remember that this is happening all the time now. So we're working to get confirmation at the highest levels. AP citing a government source is what we've got. And we know the Polish government is convening an emergency meeting. That's what we have. It's probably why the markets have come back just a touch. Can I say the power lunch returns right after this? You sure can. Thank you. We're back right after this. Let's go. We're live.